Um, morning, guys. Uh, let me just put this um, cigarette out. I don't really like smoking on here because, um, you know, my uh, grandchildren could be watching, you know, and as you know, it's a terrible habit smoking, and uh, I'm really trying hard to give that up. I have cut down. Um, the story I'm doing this morning is um, about a time, another time, because uh, this has happened to me a few times, that I went over on the heroin, on the brown, uh, after I'd just come out of prison. Um, the story is, is set in, it's what well, it happened in, um, in Carshilton there by a pub, just opposite the pub called the Windsor Castle there. Um, I have got another story about that pub, I've got a few actually, and I'll be doing them in the future. But uh, yeah, um, that's the story today, but I want to give you a little bit of background um, about me and uh, where I'm from and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so uh, I was born, you know, in the late, late 60s, yeah, I'm in my 50s, in uh, in southwest London, in a little place called Norbury, uh, you might have heard that, that's uh, where Stormzy's from, Norbury, near Thornton Heath, Streatham, around that area, uh, and that was in London Borough of Croydon, uh, right on the uh, border there, between uh, London Borough of Croydon and Lambeth. And uh, I was born in a house there, just around the corner from uh, Mary Millington's sex shop. Uh, it was one of the first sex shops outside of Soho, I think. Um, so yeah, I was born in a house not far away from there, a few streets away. And uh, my family had moved from uh, an estate in um, William Bonnie Estate in there in uh, in Clapham in southwest London. Um, you know. Uh, got their little house there in Norbury and I was born in the house. But uh, my family, both sides of my family that is, they're all from South West London and um, a relative of mine a few years ago at my granddad's funeral around that time, sadly he passed away uh, just after I was released from prison. Um, so I did go to the funeral. Um, he, he fought in the World War Two in Burma, he was a Marine. Um, yeah, so he he done um, some research and, you know, done the family history and all that stuff. So, yeah, both my fa sides of my family have been in South West London for, you know, well over 200 years. And, uh, you know, on one side, uh, they're all costermongers, you know, which is uh, market traders. You know, uh, one of my uncles, he had a fruit and veg shop there in uh, Wandsworth Road. And he used to be at Covent Garden, you know, he'd go there every day. Um, you know, uh, one of my aunties at a flower shop, you know, so like I say, all market traders. Um, on the other side, there's, uh, they're all builders, you know, stuff like that. And uh, the granddad who was a paint uh, baker, you know, he had a bakery in Clapham, you know, uh, my dad, he was a uh, Battersea boy from Battersea there. And uh, my mum, she was from Clapham. You know, I still have relatives around that manor today, living in uh, Stockwell, you know, Stockwell Park Estate, all around there, Kennington, you know, um, and uh, I was reading some comments before about people saying Croydon in Surrey, you know, originally Croydon was in Surrey, but since 1966, so over 50 years, it has been part of London, you know, uh, it's the same as all of South London was originally in the counties, you know, you've got like uh, Surrey Docks, originally, you know, it's called Surrey Docks because originally it was Surrey, you know, many, many years ago, you know, but uh, as most people know, London started off really small as the tiny little city in the square mile and has grown and grown, so yeah, you know, and uh, the reason um, people call like uh, London Borough of Sutton, say, Surrey, um, is because, I mean, in the 60s when it became part of London, the postcodes weren't changed, you know, to like Southwest uh, 20 or whatever, which is some parts of Sutton is Southwest 20 as far as I know. Um, you know, uh, and I mentioned Sutton because, like I say, uh, I was born in Norbury, uh, just by Streatham there, but uh, after a few years, when I was a little kid, uh, my family, we moved to a place called Carshorton. 
Carshilton Beach is there and that's where I went to school. Um, you know, so that's mainly the place where I say I'm from, is from um, Carshilton Beaches really. You know, that's where I went to school and uh, that's where most of my early memories are from, you know. And uh, leaving it there with a the, uh, bit of history about my family and stuff. Um, uh, like I say, the pub where I nearly died this time was called the Windsor Castle and that is in um, Carshilton, right by Carshilton Road there. You know, right near Carshilton Ponds. I'm sure a lot of you know that place. But, um, yeah... So the story was, basically what happened is um, I'd been released from uh, a three year sentence and uh, I'd got out of High Point, you know, I'd been out a couple of times on that sentence, I'd had a couple of home leaves, one for three days and one for a week, pardon me, so uh, you know I hadn't been out that long and uh, during that sentence and other sentences I was always getting uh, a lot of prison visits from friends, you know especially friends from around that area. Although I did have visits from friends that I did meet in um, in jail, you know, uh, uh, friends that I'd made in there who come, when they got out, they came up and visited me, which was really good of them. Um, but this time, um, yeah, uh, this story is about um, one of my friends, Lowell. I'd, um, I don't know if he's still alive, because like I say, it's a long time ago, but if he is, I hope you're well. Um, Lowell from Sutton. Um, he'd been visiting me at Downview, and you know, I think he came up to High Point as well. But um, uh, so when I got out, he'd been arrested himself, and he was down on the Isle of Wight in uh, a prison then, uh, which was called Camp Hill. So he was there serving, um, I don't know, I can't remember what the sentence was two and a half years or something, I think. And, uh, you know, he'd been writing to me, uh, we'd been writing to each other, you know, in jail. And when I got out, because he'd come to see me, I promised that I'd go and see him, you know. And it's a long old trek down the island. And uh, so basically what happened was um, I've got out, I've got a letter from him, you know, saying, will you come down and visit me and can you bring something down? And of course, you know, returning the favour, I've wrote back and said, yeah, of course I will. So basically what's happened is uh, he sent me a bit of dough as well. So he wants this, uh, I think it was uh, an eighth or a sixteenth. That's a, I think it was a gram and three quarters, a sixteenth of an ounce of um, heroin. And, you know, it was good heroin as well that I was getting at the time. This would be 1995, so a long time ago. So basically, yeah, um, I'm going to do this visit for him. And like I was saying, I'd only been out myself a matter of weeks, couple of weeks at the most, if that. So, you know, uh, what I've got to do is um, go down up to, because uh, I haven't got a car, so basically I've got to go on the coach, which is a long journey. I've got to get the coach at Clapham, outside Arling and Hobbs there. Stay on the coach all the way down to uh, the ferry at Portsmouth. You know, that goes on to the ferry. And then I can get off the coach and um, go and have a cup of tea or whatever and then get off at the other side at the Isle of Wight and then uh, go to uh, the prison, Camp Hill you know, the coach drops you off right outside for visits, you know, and Camp Hill was a sea cat prison so it was pretty easy taking gear in there, you know so basically I've took him his gear, said hello, caught up with him quickly, you know and he's gagging for a bit of gear, you know, because he uses all the time or as much as he can in there and so he's only on a visit for a couple of minutes, takes his thing and then goes. And then I go back, wait, go out of the prison, wait for the coach and go home. So, you know, it's a long old day. You know, you start the day at like eight in the morning or whatever. And um, from London, southwest London. And I, I wouldn't have got home till early evening, maybe six, seven o'clock in the evening. You know, I'd be dropped off at Clapham in the coach and then have to go back to... Um, Car Shorten from there on the train. So yeah, it's a long old uh, trip. And then, you know, you've got the risk of supplying a prison and all that, you know. You get caught for that, you're looking at a few years, you know. Especially with a Class A drug. You know, uh, I know people that have been caught just smuggling in a couple of spliffs worth of puff and got two, three years for that, you know. So yeah, I was lucky not to get caught. You know, and I did used to do it a lot, you know. 
But um, the story, yeah, what I want to go on to, the next visit, you know, uh, same thing again, money's gone into my account, so I've gone and scored the, uh, the parcel of brown, the parcel of heroin uh, for lull, you know, um, I think it was an eighth this time, or it might have been a sixteenth, like I said earlier, so this is the second time, you know, and I think I might have been a bit short myself, you know, so basically... Uh, I might not have had any money myself, you know, I hadn't been out that long and I don't think I was out grafting, you know, I weren't doing no choring, no nothing, you know. So basically, uh, but I did have a car by this time, I had a, a Triumph Acclaim, which is quite a nice little car, black Triumph Acclaim I had. And uh, I used to drive around then with my mate Chrissy and uh, my other mate Ivor the Dread. Uh, they're both from like Maudlin, around that way, you know. So, um... Yeah, but this time uh, I've, I've gone to score and then uh, on the way home I, I've come down Carshorton Road and then gone into this block of flats opposite the pub there, the Windsor Castle. There's a block of flats opposite there and you can, uh, on Beaches Avenue it's called, and you can um, drive in there. So I've dr driven the motor in there and what I've done basically, um, I've decided I want to have a hit, you know, but... Uh, because I've just scored this gear for Lull to take down to the Isle of Wight, I haven't got any of my own gear because I was skint this day. So I've decided to take a hit out of this parcel of heroin for him. And thinking rightly now, it was definitely a 16th. So it would have been a gram and three quarters of heroin, which is a lot of gear in there, you know, a lot of gear in prison. Uh, to me even, I suppose it's quite a lot to a lot of people out here, but you know, some of the habits I've had on heroin, I used to do that in a day sometimes, not all the time. I mean, on average, my habit outside in heroin used to be about a gram a day, you know, that's injecting. And if I was smoking it, it would possibly be more. And that went on for years, you know. I was on heroin for 37 years um, and injecting most of that time. Although the last few years of that, I was mainly just smoking the heroin. And also, I was doing crack as well, you know. I started doing crack, in the first time I'd done crack was 1990. But, um, you know, I was in and out of prison a lot then. You know, and I was, I, was doing, I was quite bad on it, but I don't think I got really, really bad on the crack till about when I came out in 1995. That's probably another reason that I was skint as well, because I've uh, probably been buying rocks. But um, yeah, so from 1995 for the next 25 years, I was bang on the crack as well, mainly smoking that on the pipe. Although I did used to chase it on the foil as well, on the Jimmy Boyle, I used to chase the crack. You know, sometimes I used to put it on the foil with the heroin and uh, chase, ch melt it and then chase the beetle together, you know, or sometimes I used to even chase the crack on its own. You know, when you melt it on the foil, you get like a clear beetle. It's not like the heroin where the beetle is like um, black, dark brown colour, you know, but it runs really well, crack on the foil. I first saw someone chasing crack on the foil in uh, in the 80s on Peeps Estate in Deptford around uh, um, Animal George's flat there, this guy Animal George. Uh, he was a well-known um, user dealer around that way, around Deptford, back in the 80s and 90s. Sadly, he's passed away now. And uh, I don't know if his Mrs. Sonia is still alive, but um, if she is, I hope you're well. And his kids. Um, but like I say, that was years ago. I haven't seen them for years. So, yeah, getting back to the story. I'm in the... Uh, uh, where did I leave it? Sorry if I'm jumping from one subject to another. But none of this stuff on, the, on my videos is edited. It's almost just the same as me doing a live, you know, because I can't pause my video halfway through because um, I don't have an app to do all that or the, the facilities on my phone to do all that or the right camera equipment but I will hopefully be getting a new phone soon and you know it can make things a bit easier for me or I'll um, try and download an app or something but yeah so we're back to the story I'm outside the Windsor Castle I've just scored from my mate Lowell uh, 16th of uh, heroin a gram of three quarters of heroin, which I'm taking down to Camp Hill Prison on the Isle of Wight for him. I'd already seen him about two weeks before and uh, took him uh, a parcel down already. And I'd only been out of prison myself, you know, a matter of days, probably a couple of weeks at the most. 
So yeah, um, what I've done is um, I'm, I've come back from scoring. I've stopped at the Windsor Castle pub. There's a, some flats opposite there. I pulled in to the car park on the flats opposite in my Triumph Acclaim car and decided to, ha to take a hit out of Lowell's parcel, you know, and uh, have a hit, an injection of the heroin. You know, I was using quite a bit back then, so it would have been at least half a gram in one hit that I was doing. Sometimes a bit less, sometimes a bit more even, you know. And I used to do that sometimes three, four times a day, you know. But uh, as a minimum back then, I'd be using like um, a quarter of a gram in each hit four to six times a day. But um, sometimes more if I was doing crack as well, you know. Because uh, as, as you will know, crack, you know, it um, cuts out the effects of heroin, you know, and you end up wanting to do more heroin to bring yourself down. So, yeah, I'm having this hit in the car, which was just heroin on its own, no crack this time. And uh, I'm outside these houses, these flats there, and uh, I'm, uh, I've got out the spoon, you know, opened up the parcel, you know, put the, um, put the brown in, put a bit of it, vitamin C powder in, you know, to break down the, the brown, because the brown we get here, you know, it's not made for injecting straight away, really. You have to add citric or vitamin C powder to break it down. It doesn't dissolve, you know, um, on its own in water without that, you know, really made for smoking, the brown gear is. So, yeah, I've, uh, I've put the brown in the spoon, added the uh, vitamin C powder, you know, got the syringe, drawn up, you know, it would have been a one mil syringe back then, you know, when I was about 25, uh, drawn up some water, squirted that into the uh, spoon, you know, give it a quick stir, heated it up, heated the spoon up with a lighter, you know, uh, then got a little filter off a cigarette, you know, probably off a uh, cigarette out of my fags that I was smoking, although I do smoke roll-ups now, I did used to smoke cigarettes, tailor-made cigarettes, you know, salmon and trout, snout. So, um, yeah, I broke off a filter, I would have thrown that in the spoon, then I would have drawn up the um, the heroin into the syringe, you know, I would have filled the syringe right up, you know, being a one mil, you know. You know, sometimes I did used to use bigger syringes, two mils and five mils, you know, and I had to because um, with them little one mils, sometimes, you know, if you're cooking up a lot of gear, it gets like treacle and they're too small to go through a small needle or you, you want to get more in, you know, so you need a two mil barrel or a five mil barrel, which is what I used to do, sadly, you know, especially um, with the bigger needles. I used to use them, I used to have to use them to get the deep veins in my groin. Uh, yeah, I used to inject in my groin for many, many years, for over, you know, 25 years or more I was injecting my groin. So like I say, yeah, but at the time, this time, it would have been just an injection into my arm, I think. I think I still had veins in my arm by the time I was 25. And um, as I've just been in prison, uh, you know, your veins do come back after they've collapsed once or twice, you know. Uh, so yeah, as I was young, I still had veins, so yeah, I've drawn up the gear, you know, through the filter, you know. Uh, then uh, I would have used a tourniquet, you know, and, uh, you know, to get my veins up. I haven't got any veins anymore, as you can see, they're all gone. Um, uh, sadly, you know, you know, I'm not proud of all this. Um, I'll go into why I'm telling you all about this in a bit, but uh, I just want to finish this little story. So yeah, I've had the hit, you know, injected the hit. And what I remember is, um, basically I don't remember much, you know, basically I've had the hit and I've gone over. I've overdosed, you know. But luckily for me, yeah, when in that triumph claim, although the ignition was turned off, the, the, the horn still works, still worked in that car. You know, I didn't know that, but uh, when I've uh, overdosed, or gone over, I've leant forward because I'm in the driving seat and uh, leant forward like that and gone right onto the uh, steering wheel and my head has landed, luckily my head has landed right on the button for the, um, for the, for the horn, for the hooter and you know it's gone off and it's made a really loud sound, you know, you know how loud uh, uh, a car horn is, it's really loud and uh, luckily for me a guy, this coloured guy in the flats there, God bless him, he's heard this, come down to the car, 
I opened the door, luckily that was open, he's opened my door at the uh, driver's side, you know, and seeing what's going on, obviously seeing the needle there, worked out that I'd overdosed, and he, luckily for me, called an ambulance, you know, and uh, basically the ambulance uh, has put me in the back of the ambulance on a stretcher, and I was uh, taken to St. Helier Hospital, you know, and uh, basically they injected me with Naltrexone or Narcon, if you want to call it that, which is uh, which reverses the effects of the heroin, of the overdose, takes it all out of your system. And uh, I've come back round, luckily for me, you know, and uh, basically um, I didn't really know how I got there. They explained to me what had happened and, uh, yeah, and a little bit came back to me. Um, and I thought, well, you know, I come around, the gear's all out of my system. I wasn't sick sick, but uh, I was completely straight because the, the Narcon, the Naltrexone, has took all the gear out of my system. And I thought, right, I'll have to go back to the car and see if I've left anything in there. So I've walked from St. Elia Hospital down to um, Car Shorten Road there, near the Car Shorten Ponds, back to my car, you know. And when I've got back to the car, I've seen the guy who saved my life. You know, and thanked him because he, he's come out again when he's seen me, you know, and uh, I said thank you to him. And he was saying, you know, why do you do this and this, that and the other. And I said, you know, mate, I, I really don't know why I do it, you know, or, well, why I did do it, you know, and uh, thanked him for saving my life, you know, and basically got into my car and, and drove around the corner and, um, you know, basically got some of the gear out that was left stashed in my car and cooked up another hit and done that in the car again and I went home. You know, I was living in um, a girlfriend's house back then in uh, Brooklyn Close there, just off Bellows Road on the estate there, down by the Tudor, you know. Oh yeah, that reminds me, uh, I just want to say hello to Danielle. Uh, if you're watching, mate, hello, I hope you're, uh, you're well. And uh, yeah, say hello to Demi for me. And uh, yeah, I'm glad you're doing good, girl, and um, yeah. So yeah, that was the story today, you know, a lot of memories, uh, a bit emotional that was. But um, yeah, I'm going to try and do another story later. That's the uh, part three of my first time in Belmarsh. Uh, the part three to that, you know, that's quite a long story. I left that at the, uh, uh, where I was going through reception and I'll, I'll try and get that out today as well at some stage over the weekend, guys. And I just want to say thank you to all my uh, subscribers and everyone that watches uh, my videos, whether you are a subscriber or not, I appreciate you watching and um, also everyone that makes comments, you know, I read every one of them and I try to reply to them all, you know, so that's all good and um, yeah, quick shout out to the MK firm, you know who you are, I hope you guys are all well and uh, yeah, um, it's been a good few months, uh, you know, um, I'm, I'm away on holiday soon, so I'm looking forward to that, and uh, just want to say, yeah, just have a really good weekend, guys, and uh, I'll talk to you all soon, and uh, hope you're all well. Thanks a lot, guys.